dear rector, Professor Miri Faust, uh, the dean, Professor Eli Schlossberg, uh, dear colleagues, students, guests, family, those who came from near and, f and far, and to our dearest Professor Joel Walters. So welcome to Bar Ilan University for the Conference on Scientific and Social Contributions of Research in Multilingual and Multicultural Communities. This conference is part of the Rector's initiative to advance interdisciplinary research on campus. We thought that it is most appropriate to open such an event honoring Professor Joel Walters, an interdisciplinary research researcher, as you can see, um, these are only part of the pieces of the puzzle, um, there are many more. Um, so we thought that it's most appropriate to open it with, uh, with this upon his retirement as full professor from the Department of English Literature and Linguistics. I would like to invite our rector, Professor Miri Faust, to say a few words. Hi, good almost evening, uh, dear friends, guests, uh, chair of the department, Professor Eleanor Saichadat, uh, and of course, Joel Walters, our honorary guest uh, this evening. Um, actually, this event uh, is one of the nice outcomes of this uh, initiative that was mentioned just now to start several interdisciplinary research groups at bar -Ilan. I started a pilot two years ago with four groups. It was highly successful. And then I continued last year and I opened additional 11 groups. And now I'm going from a conference to a conference, from a <laughs> workshop to a workshop, and having a lot of nachat, they say in Hebrew, you know? And I think this is one of the most successful groups. And actually, we are hoping that it's going to develop to an impact center, which is a big research center very generously, hopefully, sponsored. And this is because it was really so successful. And, and the, the reason that I started these groups is actually, there are two reasons. One of them that I realized that there are uh, researchers here at bar -Ilan who are interested in the same scientific questions, but they don't know of each other. They, they don't interact. And uh, I thought that mainly, by the way, in the, in, in the humanities, and maybe social sciences, because the exact sciences, life sciences, they work in groups, they work in labs. So it's very natural for them to, to interact with other people. But here I found that there are groups of people, again, interested, coming from different departments, uh, having different academic backgrounds, and they don't really know each other. One, one uh, for example, issue which is not directly related to this group, but is, for example, Holocaust. I found that there are many, many research here who are interested in Holocaust from different departments, and they don't know of each other. So now we have a group on, on Holocaust. So um, this was one reason. The other reason that I deeply believe in interdisciplinary research, it was mentioned now. Uh, I myself moved um, 12 years ago, I think, from the psychology department. I'm a cognitive psychologist. I moved from the psychology department to the brain science uh, building where we have on the same floor people from different academic backgrounds. You know, I'm a psychologist, next to me there is a biologist, linguist, physicist, mathematician, and so on. And we started interacting, and even more so, um, having PhD students from different academic backgrounds. Just in the last few years, I had uh, students from, uh, coming from mathematics, and engineering, and biochemistry. Uh, in addition to education and psychology and communication disorders and cognitive sciences. And I found that really my work has been un upgraded tremendously because they kind of challenged my scientific beliefs. They looked at things from a different perspective, which is, you know, for me it's very, you know, we tend to be very conventional in our thoughts. And uh, because I, I've been so successful with my research, when it became interdisciplinary, I was thinking about uh, these groups. Um, now, the, the subject today uh, is uh, multilingualism or bilingualism, multiculturalism, which is in itself highly interdisciplinary because multilingualism is, is a way of looking at reality from different perspectives. I didn't do much re research on bilingualism, but I did some with my former PhD student who is now faculty at Tel Aviv University, Katie Borotkin. Some of you know her. And what one of the interesting thing that, things that we found is that People have a different 
set of associations, different uh, associative network in each language. Even if they are proficient in two languages, they have a different, uh, in, a, in a way, semantic memory in each language. And this means that they think differently in each language. And this is one way of looking at reality, looking at things from different perspectives, which for me is really, as someone who is really interested in creative thinking, this is one of my main areas of research now, uh, is highly interesting for me. And it's no, I think it's, it's not a coincidence that we are honoring Joel tonight. Joel, who did the research on bilingualism, and actually I have the list of his, some, some, uh, some of his uh, studies. He's an emblem of an interdisciplinary researchers looking at language from a sociolinguistic perspective, developmental perspective. He has papers in language and <coughs> criminology, language and psychiatry, language and the brain, language and communication disorders, language and memory, language and education. So many different perspectives. I think this is one of the things that has made you an excellent scientist. And for your scientific contribution, I want to thank you very much. And also, for all your contribution, uh, you took many high administrative positions here at Barilan. Uh, among them, you were the uh, chair of this uh, department, the English department, which is an excellent department. We just learned that uh, we won, or you won, we won, another Alon Fellowship, Natalia Meir. Where is Natalia? very prestigious fellowship and this is the second year in a row because la last year this department got Karaglat and this is really amazing this is very very exceptional attest to the excellence of this department and you have a great <coughs> big part in the excellence of this department you are also Dean of Humanities and advanced the faculty tremendously academic chair of one of the affiliated colleges of Barilan and many many more things so I want to thank you for this too because you really left your mark on this system. And thank you very much. And I'm sure you are going to do great things uh, in other places. Uh, we are also celebrating the, uh, I think, uh, I, I don't know if Dr. Soracha is here. Ah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we met, <laughs> right. Yeah. Professor Soracha. So actually, we are opening here the Israeli branch of Bilingualism Matters. OK, it's a great occasion. <laughs> This is really one of the subjects that it's, it's very important to science, but also to society. Israel is a very multilingual and multicultural society. By the way, some people think that the, the fact that we are a startup nation and there is so much creativity and innovation in Israel is a result of this multicultural, multilingual look at the world. You know, different people with different perspectives, with different ways of thinking, things, they meet together and there is a blast. And we have this such a small country and uh, so s few resources. And then, uh, nevertheless, and uh, I I'm sure you are going to make a change. I'm very proud yeah. of this initiative, yeah. I'm sure. And uh, thank you very much for choosing us. <laughs> thank you. Uh, OK, uh, I'm uh, sorry that I won't be able to stay. I'm sure this is going to be a very interesting conference. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I hope it's going to be very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Faust. Um, we are here to celebrate who Joel was and is to each one of us, as a colleague, as a mentor, as a friend, as a combination of any of the above. And in whichever combination you choose, the thought of Joel as Adam, a mensch, crosses your mind with the emphasis on his humane nature. I would like to invite the Dean of Humanities, Professor Eli Schlossberg, to say a few words. Thank you very much. I'm sure you think that I'm here just as, as a dean, as a present dean, saying out of courtesy, out of politeness, a few words to a former dean, which is probably true. But there is more to it. I mean, Joel and me are not only friends, at least from my, from my side, I think, good friends. I hope, I want to believe good friends. But we used to be neighbors. Before he went to the north and left Petah Tikva, we used to live a few blocks for one another, the families. 
knew each other. We used to be his guests, and he would come to, to, to us, he, Laura, and the children. Our little children uh, learned swimming together, and my wife and his wife, Laura, used to take the, 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 the children, Batel, and, well, the, his name is Akiva, which I used to, know, to, 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 to call Rabbi Akiva, but he was more known as Kivi. <laughs> but so so we are really good friends and, and, and more than that. And I'll tell you a story. I think Joel knows the story. We even davened in the same shul. We prayed in the same shul in, in Mekor Chaim congregation in uh, Petah Tikva. And there, before reconstructing the shul, there was a row, shura in the in the shul, and the row was uh, had seven seats. It was on the right side of the shul, the third from the Mizrach. The seat from the left, the first one from the left, was occupied by one named Professor David Solberg, who used to be the dean of faculty of humanities in Bar Ilan. <laughs> the third seat was occupied by Professor Joel Walters, the dean of humanities in the in, in University of Bar Ilan. And the fifth one was occupied, well, it, was, it, it, it isn't there anymore because, as I said, it was reconstructed and, and all the furniture were taken away. But I sat in the f fifth one. I think it's a Guinness winning prize. I mean, <laughs> a row in which the, the, there were three deans from the same faculty in the same, in the same university. So that's the background of, my, of, of, of Joel and me. And during the years I had, as you can understand, you can assume a lot of conversation with him and I learned from him a lot. Not, not, not about this puzzle over there because although I come from uh, 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 the department of Arabic, which is language and linguistics as well, but I wasn't that interesting in, in, in social linguistics. And, but I had a lot of conversation with him, especially when he was a dean, about how to be a mensch, how, what, what you mentioned, how to be a, a director for one side, but not forgetting your, the, the fact that you are dealing with people, with human beings, and they should be treated other, in an other way than, than, than just, just workers in, 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 in the factory. I want to, uh, before I forget, I want to use it as opportunity a few months, a, a month ago, I think, or maybe a little more, we had a Kenneth Faculta, something which I established. I think it's a good opportunity for all the faculty to know each other, which one can hear lectures from other departments, from other uh, uh, areas of knowledge. And we had in this Kenneth a special uh, event for the, those who retired last year. And we even presented them with a small present just to make them remember us, even, even when they won't be here. Joel wasn't able uh, to come at the time, so I want to use this opportunity and present you with this small, again, present, but again, something for you to remember us. Thank you very much. And now what can I wish you, Joel, what can I tell you when you retired? My late grandmother used to say that a man, a human being, needs in life two things. She said it, of course, in Yiddish, Asach gesind and Abisa lemazl, meaning a lot of health and just a drop of luck, although mazl is not exactly luck, it's a lot more than that. Well, a lot of health. And I'm sure you work very hard, and you are not uh, sitting, you know, just reading books all the time, but you are working in, in, the, in the academy and, and in other places. So I hope really that we'll be able to cooperate and to see each other. And I want to remind you that your invitation, open invitation for us to come and be your guests in the summer for a few days and sleep in your place, <laughs> I hope it's still uh, valid. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words, Professor Schausberg. Usually when people retire, they tour the world, they rest, they find more time for themselves, but you, Joel, are not typical. 
You decided to chair the Communication Disorders Department at Adassa Academic College to continue your involvement in ongoing research about bilingualism and disorders, to mentor your students despite your continued travel from a lot in the north to Jerusalem, which is three to four hours away depending on how you travel. I'm happy to invite Professor Eleanor Said Haddad, the Chair of English Literature and Linguistics Department, and your neighbor who shared many joint rides up north with you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It gives me really great pleasure to take part in opening this conference uh, and in inaugurating uh, bilingualism matters at bar -Ilan University and in honoring my teacher and neighbor and friend Professor Joel Walters. Uh, this is indeed a very unique conference because um, only rarely do we really think about the societal implications of the scientific research that we do. We enjoy very much sitting in our ivory towers and thinking about how we would portray our evidence-based realities for the uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, audience, but we think very little about what societal implications this has for, for real life, for what people do, for the struggles that they, uh, that they have to encounter on, on uh, a daily uh, basis. You know, many times we write implications at the end of our papers, only sometimes because the jour journals want some implications, but we don't really think about societal implications. So I'm very happy that at this conference we are forced to think about and tackle uh, uh, these uh, uh, real life issues, and that during these uh, uh, three days we're going to have researchers and also people uh, 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 like uh, educationalists, like uh, practitioners who deal with these issues, and together we will be uh, um, thinking about uh, uh, these, uh, these issues. Uh, I mean, just an example of the kind of struggles that people are forced to deal with and which we don't really think much about. Just yesterday, very late at night, I received an email from someone who just graduated from a, a teacher training college, and she was saying, I studied uh, at, I can't remember which college, as a teacher of Arabic, and during our training, we read all of your articles on diglossia and the impact of you know, the linguistic distance between spoken and standard Arabic on the acquisition of language and literacy. But now I'm starting to teach at a Jewish school, and I will have to, to teach Arabic as a second language. So what, can you, I mean, what, what uh, tips can you give me? Do I teach standard Arabic? Do I teach spoken Arabic? How do I deal with diglossia? What techniques can you give me? And then I looked at this email, and it was you know, um, midnight, and I said, <laughs> That's a complex question. <laughs> I mean, I can't answer this, this question in, 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 a few, in a few seconds or, or even minutes. So I just did mark as unread, and I said, I will get back to it and think about it. I mean, people in the field think that we have quick answers to their problems, think that we have a panacea for their, for their struggles. But unfortunately, when we do research, we don't directly tackle these issues. And it takes us some time before we we can think about how best to deal with these, uh, with these things. So I'm glad that at this conference we will be forced to do this. We will be forced to think about how to tackle real life issues. Um, um, I want to think that one of the problems, I want to say that one of the problems that we really find ourselves sometimes incapable of dealing with these, with these things is that unlike what we do in research, reality is very complex. When, when we do research, and that's what we teach our students, like on, introduc on introductory courses to psycholinguistics, research methods, Natalia, okay? <laughs> the key to doing proper research is to identify the factors that affect performance of a construct, isolate these factors, control for these factors, and then manipulate only the factors that you're interested in. That's how we do research, and that's key to doing proper research. But that's not how reality works. Yes, in reality, all of these factors converge together, and they interact in very, very complicated, very, very interesting ways, resulting in some phenomena that, we, that our research really cannot very many times capture. So it's very important that, the, that researchers and people from the field speak to each other. And indeed, many, not many, but some of the papers that I wrote were triggered by questions that people asked me at conferences. Yes, but I addressed these questions in my research because I also felt that they had some theoretical contribution. That's what we are usually most, most uh, uh, interested in, the theoretical contributions of, of, of research. But 
game. What is very interesting and unique about this conference is that it thinks beyond the theoretical contributions. It thinks about the societal impact of doing research. And I would like to congratulate the organizers of the conference, uh, Sharon Armon Lotin and, and members of the, and Karmit Altman and members of, of, the, uh, of the Bilingualism Center, which the rector graciously uh, uh, helped us found at this university. And uh, I would like to congratulate us on bilingualism matters, which I think is going to make a great contribution. And it's, I think it's a landmark in the history of Barilan and the history of Israel. So thank you. Um, now I want, to do, I want to say a few words in honor of, of Professor Walters. Uh, I have known Professor Walters for more than 30 years now. <laughs> when I came here as an undergrad uh, in 1986, and I still remember sitting uh, on his introductory course to applied, applied linguistics at the time. And um, it was, of course, much of this work, much of this course was bilingualism. <laughs> mm -hmm. And much of this course was education too, language education. And I still remember that I was intrigued by the fact that a scientific domain, second language acquisition, was basically triggered by real life questions like how do we teach a second language? Yes, and I think this really illustrates the fact that very nice theoretical domains and theoretical perspectives can come out of real life questions. Um, Professor Walters was my teacher, is still my teacher, but he, <laughs> <laughs> he was my teacher as an undergrad student. And he, when I started as an academic at Barilan, uh, um, he became my mentor because my supervisor, my PhD supervisor at the time had retired, Professor Spolsky. So Professor Walters took over. And at the same time, he moved from Petah Tikva, luckily to me, he moved from Petah Tikva to Malot. And we enjoyed these long rides on the train, three hours each way, <laughs> talking about academia, talking about life. I still remember when Joel told me, you know, I was during the beginning of my career thinking about what, what should I, what should I study? There are so many interesting questions that I want to study. And he said, Eleanor, stick to one thing that you have passion for and become identified with it. Yes. And then I chose diglossia because I had passion for diglossia, for the effect of diglossia on language and literacy, uh, literacy acquisition. And indeed, I became identified with it. So thank you, Joel. Um, I also remember that I used to complain to him and say, Joel, my kids always complain. They say, I'm not home. I, I, you know, I travel a lot. And he said, that's another very important lesson in life. Eleanor, children will always complain. <laughs> no matter what you do. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, OK, uh, I have to quote uh, Jobran, Khalil Jobran, a very uh, well-known uh, um, artist and novelist and poet, a Lebanese Arab uh, 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 artist who in his book, The Prophet and Nabi, which was originally written in English and then translated into more than 50 languages, he uh, said about giving that you give very little when you give of your possessions, but it's when you give of yourself that you truly give. And I think, Joel, you were a true giver. You give a lot to me personally as a student and then as a colleague. And you give a lot to the department. And here I thank you on behalf of everyone in the, in the English department, the English Literature and Linguistics Department. So thank you a lot for everything you did for us. And uh, I hope that you will continue to give and that you will have many more years of giving and many more years of joy and health and success. And it's very hard for me to put how I feel towards you in words. <laughs> but uh, uh, you are very dear to me and very dear to all of us. And thank you again for everything. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Eleanor. <laughs> um, OK, so when we think of Joel, we can think uh, and mention Joel's position as chair of the department. We can think of him as dean of humanities. Or we can associate Joel with many papers in top journals in bilingualism, language acquisition, and language disorders. We can also relate to the competitive grants he received throughout the years, like the PISA, the NERP, BMBF, ISF, GIF, 
We can further talk about the hundreds of conferences he attended in order to promote interdisciplinary research and create new connections for better research. And we cannot do without mentioning his 2005 <coughs> book on bilingualism, the, the socio-pragmatic and psycholinguistic interface where Joel presents the bilingual SPPL model. This model integrates psycholinguistic and socio-pragmatic aspect with relation to the individual and group societies and communities. I will now turn to the community of Joel's colleagues and friends who have asked to share some of their experiences with Joel over the years. I'm very happy to invite Professor Yuval Wolf, a professor emeritus from uh, criminology at Bar Ilan University, who also relates to the psychosociological -socio perspective in his research and is a close friend and colleague with whom Joel wrote several papers and grants. There's a well-known phenomenon in uh, psycholinguistics uh, uh, called, uh, called code switching. Uh, the principle is that uh, when one is uh, emotional about something, he code switch, he is code switching to his first language, since I'm not a bilingual uh, but uh, Hebrew speaking uh, from birth, then I'll code switch to Hebrew. Uh, I, uh, I hope that uh, our, our friends uh, whose uh, first language is English will forgive me and understand what I'm saying. Kshekarmit bikshamimeni להגיד משהו על יואל, אז הייתה לי בעיה. הייתה לי בעיה קשה, כי אני אוהב אמת. ואני יודע שבמושבים כאלה אומרים רק דברים טובים. <laughs> והתחלתי לחפש מה אפשר להגיד רע על יואל. ואני מוכרח להגיד, אני מוכרח, לפני שאני מגיע לפואנטה, איזה דבר רע יש לי להגיד על יואל, אני מבין שהמתח הולך וגובר, אז לפני שאגיד את זה, אז אני רואה את עצמי פטור מלציין את ההישגים המדעיים המרשימים ביותר של יואל, הרקטור, כבוד הרקטורית עשתה את זה יפה מאוד, וזה נעשה עד עכשיו. אז אני פטור מזה, אני אשתדל לדבר על יואל כאדם, וכאדם יש לו חיסרון אחד גדול. הגיע הזמן שתשמע את האמת. <laughs> אז... <coughs> ואיפה מצאתי חיסרון של יואל? אנחנו בזמנו הקמנו קבוצת כדורסל של, ה... <laughs> של הסגל האקדמי, ויואל היה בחמישייה, גם אני. Uh, ואני מוכרח להגיד שהוא היה גרוע ביותר בדיפנס, בהגנה. <laughs> הוא לא עשה הגנה כמו, ש, כמו שצריך. <laughs> אשתמש בזה כמטאפורה. אני בשנות ההיכרות uh, הרבות עם יואל לא מצאתי אותו פעם אחת מגן על כבודו. פעם אחת. כל אשמה... שהסתובבה בשטח, יואל לקח אותה לפני שמישהו אחר הספיק, או לפני שהאשימו מישהו אחר. ברור לחלוטין למה אני מתכוון כשאני מדבר על גרוע בדיפנס. זה חסרון, חסרון שתצטרך להתמודד איתו. <laughs> המשכתי לחפש, לא רק בתחום הכדורסל, ו... ולא הצליח, זה לא הצליח, באמת חיפשתי, וכל פעם שחזרתי לחיפוש, מאז שכרמית דיברה איתי, שתי אותיות, שתי אותיות ניצבו לנגד עיניי עם, עם גרשיים ביניהן, ושתי האותיות הן ל' וו'. ואני מתכוון לזה. 
אני מוכרח להגיד, אני לא בא מרקע דתי, והמפגש שלי עם העולם הדתי, גם באוניברסיטה ואחר כך בחברות אחרות, אני חי בסביבה דתית, במפגש הזה נתקלתי עם הרבה, עם הרבה בני אדם שמגדירים עצמם כדתיים. אבל המושג האמיתי שלי על אדם דתי, לא על דת, על הדת היהודית קראתי מספיק ו- ו- ואני מתפלל וכולי, אבל המושג שלי על אדם דתי במרכז המפה והפרופיל נמצא יואל. אני רוצה לספר אירוע, אירוע אחד ש- שמבהיר את הדבר הזה. כש- ‫הכול אישי, אז גם זה אישי. ‫כשהתחלתי את הדרך באוניברסיטה, ‫אז תקופת הדוקטורט, ‫אז היה לנו מרחץ טורקי בבניין, ‫אז זה נקרא בניין המחשב, ‫לא תקשוב, בניין המחשב. ‫ישבנו בערך שמונה חבר'ה, ‫יואל עשה מחקר, ‫אני עבדתי על הדוקטורט שלי. ו- ‫ולא הייתה היכרות מיוחדת בין, ‫בין כולם. ‫יום אחד נעלמתי. ‫לאן נעלמתי? ‫היה לי אשפוז דחוף בבית חולים. ‫לא משהו נורא, אבנים בכליות, ‫אבל זה לפעמים זה, זה, זו די בעיה. ‫אושפזתי, ורגע אחרי שאפשר היה ‫לקבל קהל מי מופיע, יואל הופיע בלי שהייתה שום תקשורת או שום קשר מיוחד בינינו. אני מניח שהוא פשוט ידע שאני לבד ושאין מי שיבקר אותי, הוא הופיע שם. אני מוכרח להגיד שחוויה כזאת לא שוכחים. וככל, ואמרתי לעצמי, אם אדם כזה צריך, אדם כזה צריך להכיר, צריך ליצור קשר, וכך היה עם השנים, הלך והתגבש קשר. והרושם שלי, שאמרתי למד וו עם, עם גרשיים ביניהם, הלך והתחזק. כמו שאני אומר, חוץ מכדורסל לא מצאתי שום פגם. <laughs> הוא תמיד היה שם כדי לעזור, ואני מוכרח להגיד שגם ראיתי איך יואל עוזר לאחרים. אני לא אשכח את, ה, את הרושם הכביר שעשתה עליי המלחמה. להעלות את אחותו לין ארצה. זה... אני ראיתי את זה, לין, אני ראיתי את זה מהצד ש... ש... של ישראל, של כאן, אבל הוא עשה לילותיו כימים, הוא פשוט יצא מאורו ומגדרו בכל מובן שהוא, העיקר לחלץ אותך משם, ולא ראיתי מעולם כזה דבר, זה היה... זה... ואני רואה איך, איך הוא עושה את זה לגבי כל אדם. A close friend who came in especially to honor Joe. Uh, we would like to honor you to say a few words. Shalom. I'm Professor Faust, Dr. Dean. Or Professor Joel, I'm not a professor. Um, but thank you for inviting me nevertheless. I'm not a linguist, I'm not really an academic either. I'm just a stumbler. Sometimes stumble on something, get interested in something, and stumble on until somebody helps me to find something. something. <clears throat> Now, um, I only wanted to say a few words that I was permitted to say, and I think they're less than 50 words. And while I was listening to my excellent, to the excellent people who spoke ahead of me, I said, So I have to say something more than just 50 words. Otherwise, I will completely embarrass myself. And I thought that um, a poet from Germany, Goethe, once said, everything important has already been once said. All that remains to do is to say it again. So I will try to say it again. <laughs> I, I was once here before. I was many times at Barilan, but I was once here before. And I think that's when Joel and, and I met in 2001, when uh, Barilan organized a neuroscience conference. And they invited me to speak. And I knew, and I told it to them, 
That's the reason why they invited me is because it was intifada time and I think first rank neuroscientists want, didn't want to come and so they had to go to second rank new, neuroscientists. And I said, and they said, no, it isn't that. I said, I'm happy with that. At least I'm a second rank neuroscientist. That's more recognition than I deserve. Than, than I deserve. So I spoke here and I still have a picture of that time. And um, on the way back to the hotel, I spoke to the taxi driver in my very, very broken Hebrew. And I explained to him in my very broken Hebrew what I had spoken about. And I think I had spoken about uh, a precocious language development in motor impaired children. In my very broken Hebrew. And when we had arrived to the hotel, I was about halfway through my lecture. <laughs> and he said, well, I have a little bit more time so that we could st stay there, I don't remember which hotel it was, and I could tell him more. And I said, fine, I'll tell you more. And we sat there for another half hour, and he listened to me and explained to him. <laughs> and he was so happy, and, but not as happy as I was. That somebody was interested in, in what I had to say, and even in my saying it in very, very broken Hebrew. And then the man went on and he, uh, became a new venture capitalist and he opened up a big company. No, that's not entirely true. I just made that up. So um, what I wanted to say, I actually prepared it so that I don't get it entirely wrong. Joel uh, has an intense, almost compulsive, but at the same time humble and selfless commitment to other people, which has always greatly impressed me. I believe he's one of those people who are rocks of hope in times of despair. So I wish you a little bit of luck, of, of luck and a lot of good health. Thank you very much for your kind words. Um, we would like to show a short clip of what Professor Ben C. Wolf uh, sent us in honor of this event. I can't be with you uh, at the conference, uh, but let me try to think back really to the time we first met, uh, which was actually the language and linguistic summer school in Dubrovnik in Yugoslavia, considering that Yugoslavia actually disappeared from the maps as a country in 1992, that should give everyone some idea of either how extremely uh, old we both are now, or that we were active in research in early childhood. Uh, since that first meeting, we've kept in more or less continuous contact over the years, uh, particularly in relation to our shared interest in bilingualism, um, in my case, in uh, usually in a signed and a spoken language, in Joel's case, usually in relation to two or more spoken languages. I think in both cases, uh, Joe really should be seen as a pioneer at a time when bilingualism was considered by many educators and language pathologists to actually be something uh, bad, uh, which would lead to language problems and would slow down children's cognitive and linguistic development. Uh, Joe always stood for uh, the argument that bilingualism was a natural fact of human existence and communication and has done really pioneering work in the field and uh, I think the opinions outside academia have finally caught up uh, with uh, the position Joel's always espoused. I think as well as being a great academic, Joel is just a terrific person. He's kind and gentle and generous with his time and in other ways as well. Uh, a deep thinker and I think also with a conviction that uh, research is not some kind of abstract activity. 
its value is not only in creating uh, new theories, but in bettering the lives of those uh, involved in the research and beneficiaries of research. So once again, I hope you have a wonderful time and I look forward to seeing you in the future, uh, especially when we're both retired. Um, good luck and mazel tov. Bye. Okay. Um, I would like now to invite a dear colleague from the Department of English Literature and Linguistics, Professor Susan Rothstein, to say a few words. Joel and I, so Joel and I have known each other since 1985, when I first came as the most junior member of what was then a group of six full-time linguists. Um, and it says in Pirkei Ovat, Asenecha Rabu Knelecha Chaver, find yourself a teacher and find yourself a friend. Um, I was never great at the finding of love, okay, I uh, have what my parents would no doubt have called authority problems in that sense, but I have been extraordinarily lucky in friends, um, and in the sense in which a chaver is someone who you share values with, who you can talk things over with when you have problems, who you can share your excitement with when you discover new things. And Joel, and I hope it's a reciprocal, has been a friend for the last, what, 33 years? Um, we have um, you know, talked about our research with each other, we have agonized about problems with students with each other, we've developed programs together, uh, there's a concept in Hebrew, chavel uh, salim udim, a friend who you sat on the school bench with. Well, let me tell you, if you join a faculty when you're in your 20s, your chavel safsal va'adot, your friend for the sitting on the bench of the university committees, lasts much longer than your school friends do. And um, I can only say that, I can look back on a long time, um, in which we've shared an awful lot, including conversations which have gone into children, life, you know, the most recent took place a couple of months ago and was, you know, um, all of which were incredibly important in my life. Um, I can't stand here and speak without saying that this is a sad moment for me because uh, we've been counting up um, retirement years, oh God, ever since we got here. And it was always planned that we would celebrate Joel's retirement and Jonathan's retirement together. Um, and for me, the fact that we are only selling, ce celebrating Joel's retirement is a sadness that I must share with you because otherwise it wouldn't be an honest expression of where we are. Um, uh, we miss him dreadfully and we, you know, um, well, I don't need to enlarge on that. I have to say also that with Joel's retirement, I feel very much bereft. I'm the last of the old crowd. Um, there was a long gap between when I was hired and when, so in 1985, and when the next crowd of hiring started in, I think, the late 90s when Sean and Gubby and other people were hired. So we were a very close group. And with Joel moving onward, I'm the last one left of that. On the other hand, uh, I look around and I'm very happy uh, to see uh, this. I mean, the 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 conference and the uh, the research which is expressed by the conference and the rector's faith in the program and investment in the um, multiculturalism, multilingualism project, bilingualism matters, Natalia joining the department, we hope Rose joining the department. Um, these are all things that we wanted to put together and we started planning for somewhere back in the late 80s. And it is an enormous expression of um, hope and optimism for the future for me, but, and I am assuming for Joel too, that this is actually happening now. Um, there's very little, uh, you know, as I, I said, well, when my daughter was born, like 20-something years ago, she was about 
two months old, I said to my husband, this is great, she's a healthy kid, she's wonderful, all we need to do now is help her grow up and make ourselves redundant. <laughs> and I feel very much the same way about the department. The thing which I think the most success is that all of this is happening without us, and this is an enormous tribute to everything that Joel put in, and Jonathan put in, and that we all work for all this year, the time, that you know, this is all happening now. So, as a, it's a great celebration of Joel's work here, that everything new is happening now. Um, I want to thank you all for that, and I want to thank Joel for everything that he put into the department. Um, to my professional development as an academic in the widest sense of things, I'm not going to embarrass either of us by collecting all the good advice that you gave me along the way, but there was a lot of it, and I <coughs> take it out now when I need it still. Um, and um, I wish you many, many years of continued research and continued joy in your academic work and in your family and in your community and in looking at uh, the the machzoriut, the cyclicity of life and academic life and in personal life and I hope we have many more years to share this together and that's what I want to say. Thank you.